Well, Ashton, what is our first review for this week? Sure. It's uh, Vice, which is the new Adam McKay film he wrote and directed. Is this the first film he has written by himself? Good question. Uh, I want to fact check that, actually, because I know that he wrote Big Short, but... But not by himself. No, because Big Short had a bunch of writers in it, maybe more than two. I think two. I thought it was just two, Hmm. but I could be wrong. Well, it's like two and then based on the book by Michael Lewis, I believe. But yeah, I believe this is his first film by himself. This is like a full Adam McKay experience. Un film de Adam McKay all the way. Uh, Yeah, but it's uh, roughly about... The uh, uprising of Vice President Donald, or sorry, uh, Donald Vice Rumsfeld, President, who was our oh, Vice President. Yeah, no, no, no. What a twist that would be. <laughs> yes. uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, who was the uh, VP for George W. Bush in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. And as the film depicts, it kind of colored how uh, our current state of affairs have been dictated in many ways, but at the same time, he is such a secretive kind of behind closed doors figure that the film is doing a lot of guesswork. Mm. It's a lot of like speculation to the film's comedic uh, joy, I guess. He it, it tries very hard to like admit up front, like, hey, we're just telling it how we think it is. But please don't take this as factual. Yeah, we're like, doing our best. Obviously, a lot of creative liberties and truth yeah. liberties have to be taken because of how secretive this person was. You even have like a little uh, text card at the yeah. beginning, a uh, fairly colorful fashion that explains, uh, <laughs> which is probably the best joke in the film, in my opinion. Oh, I disagree, but we'll get into it. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So uh, Christian Bale is our title character, Dick Cheney. Uh, joining him are Amy Adams, Steve Carell, uh, Sam Rockwell, Tyler Perry. I'm trying to think who else. Allison in the film. Pill. There and you go. Lots of cameos on top of that. Yeah, I don't want to give any of those away. But as a film, should I get into my early thoughts of the film, or should we uh, well, play a clip? Let's let's play a clip, Will Ashton. Let's get people interested. So here here's a quick clip from the trailer for Vice. And honestly, this is the this is what sold me on the movie. What do you say? I want you to be my VP. I want you. You're my vice. Well, George, I, uh, I'm the CEO of a large company. And I have been Secretary of Defense. And I have been White House Chief of Staff. The vice presidency is a mostly symbolic job. Uh-huh. However, if we came to a uh, different understanding i can handle the more mundane jobs overseeing bureaucracy military energy and uh, foreign policy yeah right i like that all right that is from the trailer for vice which you know as you said big cast adam mckay is somebody who kind of moved people to sort of appreciate his work in a new light, I would say, with the big short. I don't think people really looked at Adam McKay as a serious filmmaker in like the Oscars, you know, categories until the big short happened. Because before that, he was much more well known for his collaborations with Will Ferrell, obviously. I think Anchorman, Talladega Nights, of course. And Will Ferrell uh, produced this film uh, along with a lot of other Adam McKay mainstays. So it's an interesting film in that respect probably this does feel like a natural next step from the big short the big short was a film was nominated for best picture it covered the 2008 mortgage housing crisis in a way that was funny it it was it was sort of taken comedically but it was also pretty straightforward in its storytelling it was dramatic in places and it it laid out all of this horror (laughs) that happened in the late 2000s and just unpacked it for people who might not have been as politically involved or engaged during that era, especially people our age will ash in, I guess, because for me, this was a time in my life when I was, uh, you know, the Dick Cheney years I was in from elementary school all the way through middle and high school. Yeah. But, same here. Right. Right. And then big short was late high school, early college for me. So it's, it's hard for me to sort of look at this film from an objective angle because some people, they know this era. They, they know the Dick Cheney years. I, I'm very curious 
what those people will say about a movie like Vice, because Vice covers his life in a way that maybe some people will be like, I knew this already. Why am I watching this? But I want to hear from your thoughts, Will, because you are somebody who I suspect maybe you maybe you're like me. I did not know this much about Dick Cheney going into this movie. I really did not. I knew some things. I knew obviously a lot of things from the Bush era, but I had no idea how far back this guy's political political career went. His early days how he got to this point, his, you know, how he was involved with Donald Rumsfeld, all of that was news to me. And I should also mention, you saw Vice way before I did. And around, uh, a couple weeks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Around the same time I saw today. So you saw this when critics were really sounding off, basically. So sure. where are you at? Yeah. Uh, so the film is intentionally divisive. It's not, if you're expecting this to be a fairly straightforward biopic, I uh, don't expect that. Yeah, it's not uh, objective. Yeah. It doesn't tell both sides right. equally, whatever that means. It's yeah, yeah. it's not or, a uniter. Uh, <laughs> people will say it's biased. I guess that's the word that people. I, I think critics, uh, the film favorable and not, will say that it's biased. But the nicer I don't really way to put it, well, the nicer way to put it is it takes a side. You know, it has sure. it actually has the courage of its conviction in a way. Yeah, but at the same time. Yeah, so I guess I'll I'll I'll, lead, I'll come back to that thought, but um, yeah. So as a film, it's intentionally divisive. I think it doesn't play it safe as far as its execution. It plays a lot with editing, style choices, writing choices, character choices in a way that sometimes is interesting, sometimes it's not. It feels kind of like a hodgepodge of styles, which I was kind of I knew that going in, so I was expecting that, mm -hmm. and I knew that it was going to be pretty messy because I think the film is open about its being messy because, like we said at the beginning. It's kind of doing a lot of guesswork. It's just kind of like saying like, hey, this is the best we can say as far as like what we think happened. But ultimately, we're this is a narrative film from an outsider's perspective. So we can't say for sure. Right. But and the, the big short that, kind the big short kind of did the same sort of thing where experimented. It did kind of new, unexpected things. And I'd say Vice does more of that, honestly. Yeah. But the thing about the big short, and I didn't love the big short, but I liked it. I would say it's a good film. Same here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think with that film, the messiness kind of added to its favor in the way that like that film was like, look, we can't really point fingers at one exact person. Like this is like a whole stew of things that are going on. And like, we're just going to break this down as simply as possible, but just know this is like a, like a big uh, cluster. You know what? Uh, so with this film though, it's more or less saying that, this is the guy who's kind of responsible for a lot of bad things that are going on right now, which makes that style kind of odd in a way. But at the same time, I kind of respect that the movie is willing to be this audacious and this pointed and this kind of uh, liberal in, in the sense that like it's going for a bunch of different things at the same time. But with that said, at the end of the day, like once I finished the film, I have an idea what I wanted to say. But I don't really know if I knew what I wanted to say about Dick Cheney as a character. And particularly by the end, I was just kind of not at a loss, but still kind of just confused as far as like what what exactly do you want me to take away as far as like who he is and what his objective is? Like, I really don't know if I have a, I ever pinpoint exactly what Adam McKay was saying about why Dick Cheney did half the things he did. I mean, he could you could say on like a fairly surface level, like he he was addicted to power and like kind of that tale. But like a sort of like Shakespearean as look at it. But as it stands as a film, I think it has good chunks. I think there's a good film in there, but I don't think it's a good film, which I I actually disagree. I think it's good. Yeah, I think this is a good one. And. I think the criticism, I haven't read a lot of reviews for this, and I haven't seen anybody make this claim yet, but I have a feeling some of the disarray people are having with this film is that maybe the Dick Cheney character is maybe implied to be explained. Like His villainy is because his wife corrupted him, which I suspect that's where some people are at, and they're feeling a little bit like they're that the movie is pinning Dick Cheney's villainy, his awful actions on Lynn Cheney in a weird way because of the way the film is structured. And there are a few pivotal scenes that sort of imply that 
he happened because his wife sort of pushed him into this life. Now, I sort of push back against that to a great extent, honestly, because I don't think that's really what the film is getting at. But I do respect the opinion that the film isn't clear in what it's getting at. But that's where I relish in this film. I like its I like its quiet subtlety in terms of what it makes of Dick Cheney himself. I think there are a lot of takeaways you can get from his personality and from who he is as a person and all of that crazy stuff that you can take away from this movie. There's so much Dick Cheney in this movie. I mean, Christian Bale, to to his credit, sinks into this role in a way that He's kind great, of yeah. mystifies his, it mystifies me. It, I feel like I'm actually seeing Dick Cheney on screen mm-hmm. and it's almost confusing at times because you're getting so much of a person who the film's, I think the film's goal at the beginning is hey, you don't know much about this person. He's kind of a ghost almost. And the point of this movie is to peel back the layers and sort of unveil and take away the mystique of Dick Shaney, which for some people I can see as being very unsettling because you have to revisit the horrors of the Bush administration, which resulted in just tragic loss of human life, shameless corruption. I mean, some things that have led to really politically terrible realities that we're stuck dealing with at this current time. And Dick Cheney was sort of the mastermind behind all of it. And the film does this weird thing where it equally, it villainizes him as much as it humanizes him. But for me in a way that doesn't make him sympathetic at all, it doesn't say, well, you know, Dick Cheney had a point, (laughs) you know, it is firmly anti Dick Cheney. You know, throughout this entire thing, I I just don't see how anyone can argue otherwise, but in all of its anti Dick Cheney subject matter and all of its anti Dick Cheney messaging, it also to me is just telling this story of what it, what people who are quietly powerful, what they do to secure that power, how it affects real lives. And there's nothing else on top of that. And I think the big flaws in this movie, you can maybe point to there's no catharsis here, which I think a lot of people are seeking. Maybe this film is coming out at the wrong time because people are kind of wanting something different in this current political era where the Dick Cheney's of the world are profiting and they're sort of relishing right now in their power. And sort of feels like this film is kind of misplaced almost, I think some people would argue. And then I think the other thing is, honestly, structurally, this film loses steam in a few areas in the second and third act. I think that the first half of this movie and then the midpoint, that's where your good movie is, I would argue. I think there is a a gag in the midpoint of this film that absolutely had me in stitches. It was one of my funniest laugh out loud moments. Maybe because I'm such a hyper politically, you know, obsessor that I just found this so hysterical the way that they did it. And I don't want to give it away in the slightest, but to me, that was the gag of the movie. That was the funniest thing. It peaked in that moment. And then when you really go through the Dick Shaney vice president years, the pacing just loses it. I I think the, the pacing in the first half, pretty solid, but then the pacing in the second half is it's a little harder to follow because it's doing so much with so little, honestly, like you're saying, like so little information, but I think that it does find itself again by the time we get to the very end. And I can't say it's a bad movie. I think that it's still pretty good. And is it a little unwieldy in all of its experimental filmmaking styles? Totally. But when it's jokes and audacious ideas work, I really enjoy them. And so I I struggle to say that this one's a skip because I think some people who are interested in this, who want to sort of revisit these years, maybe they just like torture or something. No pun intended or reference intended. Maybe they just like to sort of relish in uncomfortable subject matter, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Then this film will absolutely do that. And I guess that's where I was at. I went into this kind of wanting to recontextualize the Shaney years as somebody who lived through them in a much more politically ignorant time in my life because I was younger. But I don't know for Will if that, if, if you would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, I don't think it's a bad film and I don't think it's like a slight film. I enjoyed the experience of watching it and I was never really bored by the film. I just don't think it qualifies as a good film as far as how the execution is. I think it's just kind of a mix of quality altogether because it feels like a lot of different films at once. 
And I just never really got the sense that Adam McKay really knew exactly what film he wanted to make. So he made like 15 films. <laughs> Would you say it's the editing or it's also just the it's production? It's totally the editing. It. No, 100 percent the editing. I would, yeah, because I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you did because I think this is a film I would show if I was teaching editing. I would show this film not because I think the editing is good. I actually think the editing is pretty bad mm. on the whole. Um, especially if you like watch um, the scene in the trailer that they kind of frame the trailer around with uh, Dick Cheney and uh, George W. Bush talking to each other. Yeah, that scene in the trailer is way better edited than it is in the you're film. You're right. Like, no, you're totally right. Yeah. Well, but my only disagreement is that I think that this film has good editing in parts and bad editing in parts. And well, I just thing. don't think it's a wholly badly edited film. That's the thing. So what I was going to get at is that to me, it feels like a edit of the film in the sense that it feels like a version of film that's neither the best nor the worst. It feels I mean, I've heard people describe it as like a test screening version of the film. And I don't I think people are saying that it's like it's like bad and unfinished. I think it just more like it just feels like a version of film because like, like, is this good? Like what, what are some notes? Like, it feels like the people are expected to come out like with the notepads, like, all right, so what change, what things would you change with things? Cause there's like yeah. a lot of segments of the film where it feels like large chunks of film are cut out or need to be filmed. And it doesn't help. The movie cuts a black like 15 times. So it feels like, is there like something missing here? Or is the right. movie just kind of expect you to know this stuff? I mean, I don't know. Like, cause especially when you're talking about like the pace of the film is really, really weird. Like the way that it's drawn out in the, for the first third, and then super rushed for the Cheney years. Mm -hmm. I think that's the problem that people are having because, like, VP I think, years, yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, the VP years feel very rushed. I think they're sold on the movie being mostly about the VP years, mm -hmm. and I just think like I'm not against what the film is doing for the first half. I just don't think it's quite as interesting as Adam McKay might think it is. Like, I didn't know that stuff. I mean, that's fair. Like, I learned some stuff, but I don't I think they could have communicated that in a shorter amount of time and spent a lot more time with the actual W. Bush era and done more with what it's saying, because especially because the beginning, it feels like it's repeating itself a lot in a way that I found at a point kind of grading until we actually got to, I think, the scene you're talking about, like the midpoint where we actually kind of get the actual plot moving along. What do you and, mean by repeating itself then? You mean repeating itself in what it's trying to say or certain scenes in particular? Or? Well, we have like a narrator character who um, is played by Jesse Plemons. I won't give away who he ultimately is because it's a big secret. It's great. Yeah, I, thought, I mean, I, I, I did was like a how, reveal. I think that was a good way to I mean, I like how it ended and I kind of wish the movie ended at the point where his story ends. Not like at that exact point, but like close uh, to it. It kind of does. Okay, but all right. Yeah, we won't get into that. That's like the perfect way to end the movie. It's like, oh, yeah, that's great. That's like a great ending for the film. And then it goes on for like 15 or 20 minutes more. And I get what they're going for. But it's like if you just end like the movie has like 20 endings, too. And that also adds to the whole nature of the film feeling like it's like a still a work in progress that we didn't quite like. I didn't get that sense. Like I said before, that Adam McKay really exactly 100 percent knew what he was saying hmm. here. See, I guess, I guess we see the same thing, but where I see, I see it as sort of breaking rules to sort of maybe not, I, I can see how it will disturb some viewers or sort of jar some viewers, I guess is the better word. But for me, I was with it the whole way through. And even though there were points where I, I would agree with you, I think that there is a better film in here. I just don't think what we're left with is a mixed film or average film. I guess I'm hearing from you that this is more average middle of the road. I, I think it's better. I, I wouldn't call it average. Okay. Okay. Then fair enough. I, I do think it's, it's a little bit better than what you're saying. So maybe we're not actually that far off. Honestly, I, I just think that there is something here that is salvageable and you do have to sit through some clunky moments. That's for sure. But I mean, there are so many, the things that stick out to me in this movie are set pieces that just feel so much more interesting and different to me than a lot of other films I've seen this year. So I guess I'm, I'm just sort of, my heart is giving this film a pass in a lot of its grave misfires, honestly, because a lot of what you're saying is totally valid. And I really, you know, I was thinking and feeling the same thing, but then every time this film would lose me when it would rush through a Shaney VP thing. And I'd be like, oh, I kind of want to slow down a little bit, or I kind of want to speed up a little bit. It would do something like have two of our main characters speak in Shakespearean dialogue, right? For an entire scene. And it sure. would hook me all over again because it was when those moments happened that I sort of felt like I was in the hands of somebody who was also a bit confused and disoriented. And I was with it for those moments because I could sort of appreciate, 
I think to what you were saying about the big short, the chaos and messiness of it. Now, I'm going to say I, I don't think this is better than the big short, which I don't think is a spectacular film. So I think we're sort of agreed on that. I, I, I think it's almost a step back from the big short in a couple of ways. But I do think that Adam McKay is on the right track. I think with his like politics trilogy, whatever you want to call it, like I guess his Bush trilogy and at this rate, I I don't know what he's going to do next, but I, I just want to see more from him on material like this because I do think he has an interesting voice when it comes to conveying and unpacking really complicated moments in our American recent history in ways that are interesting and sort of shed light in ways that some people just don't care about, I guess, because Honestly, a lot of people don't know a lot of this information because the movie kind of says this outright. A lot of us just are so busy and we don't care and we have so many other things in our mind and it's hard for us to be politically active and engaged in ways we're really analyzing our government, conservative or liberal. And that's one of the theses of the movie, honestly, Mm -hmm. among many. And there's something about the way that Adam McKay is making these films that I really appreciate and I don't want to discount. I I don't want to diminish this film too much because I don't want to turn people away from something that they might get a lot out of. And I do worry that some people will go into this movie getting something that they hate and despise or maybe something they just think is, uh, okay, fine, whatever, depending on where you're at. Well, maybe closer to where you're at on this film, but I think it's worth checking out. I don't know. Yeah, I'll check it out. I mean, for me, I I feel like the movie is so inconsistent that my opinion of the film is fairly inconsistent in the sense that like, I, I feel like my opinion of the film gets like different each day. Like some days I'm pretty negative on the film and some days I, I reflect more on the positives. I think that just me like thinking about different scenes of the film, like, like I said before, every scene is like a different quality. So like there's some moments in here that are like genuinely great. And then some moments that are pretty good. And then some moments that are like, all right, that's okay, whatever, serviceable. And then there's some moments that are just bad, like just really bad. Um, but I don't think yeah. I can get there. I don't think there was anything that I thought was painfully bad, personally. Well, I guess, yeah. I mean, where do you feel? How do you feel about the mid credit scene? I absolutely adored it. I thought really? it was fantastic. I I, I thought I that loved that it. scene that scene is weird for me because I think the first joke in it is one of the best jokes in the film, and the last two are like the worst jokes in the film. I was laughing so hard still throughout that whole thing. And obviously we won't give away that. I honestly, I was with it. I, it, it worked for me. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I think I agree with you more than I don't. I think there is, um, something that's like workable or serviceable. I think you said, um, in here, there's definitely like a really good, or at least a good film in here. There's something that better I, and tighter in here. Yeah. I just think they needed to sit on it for maybe a year. Like if they didn't rush it out into like this December release date for award season in 2018, if they had just maybe pushed it back to fall of 2019 and really kind of if Adam McKay just really sat down, focused on what he was trying to say, kind of maybe did some more test screenings and just got exactly what he wanted to say. Maybe if he pat. maybe if he recruited the talents of Zack Snyder and Zack Snyder created hmm. the ultimate vice cut is what you're saying. All right. I'm not going to feed into this, but uh, no, I just think that this just feels like a version of the film. It feels not incomplete, but like indecided, undecided complete in some ways. Some people might say, yeah, I just think, I mean, that, that that's fair. You could argue that if he spent too much time on it, it would be overworked. So it, it may be beneficial just to release it as it is. Maybe it's like one of those films, like uh, all, it, it does have a lot of Oliver Stone qualities to it. And maybe it, it'll yeah. be like one of those movies that like he'll like make several director's cuts for in the future i could see that happening uh because it feels like there's a lot of footage in the film that was yeah, not yeah there's a lot of things from the trailer that didn't right. make it in here for there's sure there's uh reportedly a musical number that got cut hmm. like a big broadway musical number i really want to see that same I hope that, here i hope that gets in the deleted scenes or something i don't even know if they filmed that i just heard that was in the works but we, we yeah haven't, we haven't talked too much about the performances and i don't oh, want yeah. to look that because uh, honestly yeah. i think the performances are hit or miss for some people but right i thought Again, we already mentioned Christian Bale. Goes without saying, he's probably going to get a nomination for Best Actor. I don't see him missing that. Uh, this yeah. is his darkest hour, Gary Oldman. But also, Amy uh, Adams. Yes. Yeah. You know, go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. I was going to say, um, you bring that up. Because I, but you also, I also want to say, I think the makeup is really good in this film. Yeah, it is. Sort of like, uh, like it, it looks, never felt distracting for me. Like I didn't feel like this is a man in a makeup suit. The like, older, it, well, the older that, the older 
Shaney that he portrays is much better than the younger because the younger Shaney, it's just, Oh, that's just Christian Bale. Um, I, I had a harder He's time. Pretty, like I, I was pretty good about like just seeing Dick Cheney. Like I never really felt like yeah. it was a performance to me. Same here. And, and like I mentioned, I, I just think Amy Adams, she disappears into this role. Steve Carell. I thought this was such a good role for him. It, it mm. was exactly right in his sensibilities because uh, I I think I thought he'd played a mean Don Rumsfeld. Like he played uh, that he played that cocky, douchey Republican congressman in a way that was I thought that was pitch perfect casting. I'm gonna have to disagree with you about Steve Crow. I, I did think uh, Amy Adams was very good. I don't think it's like top tier Amy Adams, but I thought it was very no, good. Um, not Amy top Adams. tier. Uh, well, I've heard people like say like this is like one of her best performances. I don't think it's quite there. No, no, but no. It's, it's good. But um, Steve Carell, though, I'm gonna have to disagree with you. It it felt cartoonish to me, truth be told. But it, here's the thing about well, Don Rumsfeld was kind of a cartoonish guy. <sighs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let that slide. <laughs> um, he really was but, though, and I don't know. There there was this film needed that kind of character, I guess. Like if like, if Don Rumsfeld had had less charisma and less rem- like memorable lines, this would have been a lesser film, in my opinion. Well. I agree with you, like, for that opening scene where he's, like, giving the speech. Like, I thought it worked great for that scene. But every other scene, it felt like smart brick. There, there, okay, way. I, I'll meet you in the middle because there was one scene where it was this sort of, like, hey, you got a real future in you, kid. You know, all you need is a gimmick. And that, that part was a little, uh, but, all right. Uh, this, like, ultimately, I'll have to admit that I think this might be a little bit of personal preference because I've noticed of late – that the Steve Krupp performances that really stick with me are the more understated, minimalist, nuanced ones. Like for me, his best performances of late have been in Last Flag Flying and Beautiful Boy, where he's just kind of grounded and sincere and there's like a melancholy to it. I'm not crazy about the kind of more bombastic roles he's been taking of late. Yeah, um, you know, well, I mean, don't forget about Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I mean, who could forget that? Film? That was him just at his most restrained. Well, and uh, what, what was that one film, Foxcatcher? Yeah, I liked him in Foxcatcher. Yeah. I, that's a kind of divisive performance, but I thought he was pretty good. Last Flight uh-huh. Flying, I, I'll agree with you there. That One of my favorite that's, Steve Carell performances. I think that's, that's maybe, in my top five for his performances. Yeah. It, I mean, it may be my favorite recent Steve Carell performance. It's, one, that's where it's I my see, top yeah. one, maybe top two. I don't know. But, no, okay. I really like that, yeah. Um, and then Sam Rockwell. Uh, I, 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 I adored his George W. Bush. I, this really worked for me. I mean, this is where our disagreements are really starting to become apparent because – for me, Sam Rockwell channels George W. Bush in just the right way where it's 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 just believable enough. But then also for the purposes of a kind of a comedic movie, it works, too. Like it does both things. And I can totally see some of the criticism coming that it's overdone or that Sam Rockwell doesn't quite look the part enough. But I believed it. And the. I think this speaks to what you were saying about how some scenes were so different tonally from others. And in the Sam Rockwell scenes, it's like a totally different movie almost, but it's still mm-hmm. word for me for some reason. And maybe I can't explain it, but I really liked this George W impression that he did. I think it really worked here. Yeah. I think impression is the key word. Um, it is, it is an thing- impression. Yes. It is a Saturday night live impression. I will make no misgivings about that. Sure. That's the thing. Is that like, I think, I think if you go into the film expecting him to be a key player, you should know that he's probably in the film like less than 25 minutes. I mean, yeah, it's like a handful of scenes. It feels like. Yeah. Like, but the trailer makes it seem like he's like the second lead and that's not the case. Like he's Definitely not. fairly minimal in the film. That would be Amy thing. Adams. She has second billing to Christian. Bale. Sure. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, it's definitely like an, and like definitely a, and Steve, uh, what's his name? Sam Rockwell performance but uh yeah i I think it works for what it's going for in a sense that it's like a bit role where he's kind of expected to be kind of cartoonish and aloof and dumb so it fits the film it's fine i just can't i don't see it like as a performance i see it like you said as an impersonation for me it was enjoyable to watch i mean i think sam rockwell is always great to watch but i i never felt like i was watching a performance i just felt like it was and like you said a saturday night live impression this, this feels like a film we need to revisit in a year's time, honestly. But, okay, before we get into our final thoughts and grade this movie. Uh, oh, oh uh, no, you one, have one more thing. One more thing. I think Tyler Perry is fantastic. He is. In this he he is. is eerily he captures it accurate. Perfectly. Well, then also, like, who played Condi Rice? Was it uh, Lisa? I was going to say she was great, too. I don't know who she was, though. 
Um, I I do know who she is, but I, at least it's something. And she, yeah, she, I They're thought both, it was like, on point. Yeah, 100%. I thought that was Connelly's arise for a moment. right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like they when they were both on screen, it's like like I I got goosebumps like watching yeah. um his call and pal because it's like yeah. eerily accurate, especially that um famous um UN Telecaster mm-hmm. was that UN? I forget. Uh, was it? The, I think it was. Yeah, UN? yeah, that like that's like on point in a way that does not feel like he's like doing intentionally it just feels right. like it's Colin Powell well it's yeah, not so just really when he's talking props. but it's also like the moment right after that yeah, was the most I mean. important moment and he right. just nails it perfectly and I think his performance getting overshadowed a bit consider like understandably Maybe. so he's in the film like 20 for 10 minutes so but I think he's fantastic and I really hope he does like more stuff like this because mm-hmm. he's I mean he's really a, proven like yeah he's great there's a there's an argument he has with Don Rumsfeld from Steve Carell where the two are sort of butting heads and it just that that scene was one of my favorites in the whole movie, honestly, because it was such a good to me an amalgamation of all of these characters kind of colliding, and it felt like something like it felt like you were really like a fly on the wall almost. And I know some people might disagree because of the Sam Rockwell character is in that too, and yeah. I don't know. I just think it perfectly captured everything this movie is trying to do. Honestly, I like that. I I, I agree with that thought. So. Uh... What were we going to say when you were wrapping up? Our, That's uh, right. Uh, okay. Here. So before we get into our final thoughts and our grades, we have a couple of listener reviews. We asked you on Twitter to give us your tweet-sized reviews of Vice. We want to hear from all of you cinemaholics, not just us snobby film critic people. But uh, okay. So Jordan said, this was Jordan's review, satire paints with a broad bush. Nuance is lost to highlight the absurd. The catch. History is usually nuanced. I suspect many of the film's events happened, but also that the whole thing will be easily dismissed as hyperbole by those who need convincing. Pretty well made, though. B+. Plus. Hmm. I, I adore this tweet-sized review, Jordan. This is fantastic. That was good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I, I just thought it was so... This is from Jordan Robert McGill. Uh, mm-hmm. His tweet... His uh, Twitter username is at Jordan McGill. Thank you so much for your tweet-sized review. I thought yeah. it was... Did uh did Adam McKay write that tweet? It felt like it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it had it had like a pentameter or something to it. But and then we also heard from Callahan Carl who said, This is a stone cold, mean masterpiece of a movie. Mm. So high praise. It's a nasty yeah. piece of work that works on every level imaginable. I'd like to hear more from Callahan Carl. I'm I'm very curious what makes this movie a, a masterpiece. And he's not the only yeah, one. I've heard other people call this a political movie masterpiece. I definitely am not mm. on that same level. But it's not JFK. Oh, calm down here. Uh, Oh, the (laughs) Oliver. How many Oliver Stones references are you going to get into this this episode? Not enough. Okay. Well, okay. Will Ashton, you can fit one into one more thing, I guess, into your final thoughts if you so please. Uh, did we? Um, well, uh, oh, I thought you wanted me to do another uh, 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 Oliver Stone point. I I mean, unless you can fit it in somehow, I was gonna say we never even talked about Oliver Stone's W. Well, that's because to me, that's not much of a movie. I, I really don't like yeah. that one. Well, I mean, we're talking about Vice here. So, yeah. uh, mm. all right. Uh, yeah, as it stands, um, Vice, I enjoyed the experience of watching it. Like I said, I think it could it could use some work. I think there's a stronger film in here that is Buddy and Ted, and it kind of feels like restricted in some ways by an edit of the film that isn't quite decisive enough mm. for its own good. But um, like I said, the performances are strong. I like Adam McKay's voice, and I'd rather see more biopics like this that take chances, that kind of swing for the fences, as opposed to your typical kind of uh, by-the-numbers humdrum biopic, including one that I will talk about in a couple minutes. So, yeah, I give it a B-. minus. I think it's worth checking out. I think it's worth joining the conversation to see it. I just don't think it's like a great material that it could have been. Yeah, okay, so we're not we're not that far off. I, I give this one a B. I, I do think that I, I give it a little bit more credit in some respects where I think it just didn't quite work for you, and that's quite all right. I, I really am sad to see a lot of people just outright dismiss this film. Say I've seen some people say that it's the worst of the year and things like that, which mm. I just think is completely off it's base. It's not, no. It really isn't. I, I think that there's there's so much good in here, maybe surrounded by some bad things or some things that people might find bad, some scenes that just don't quite work, some character moments that feel really weird. There's one in particular with Alison Pill that just did not work for me at all, honestly, where it sort of half humanizes Dick Shaney, but in a way that 
rings like an account of what happened and not really what happened. I know that I'm, they sort of give the disclaimers like we're doing our best to tell what really happened, but yeah, I'm wondering. Wait, is that? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's. I thought that's the one you were talking about that made you laugh a lot. No, 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 here. not even close. No, the the we we mentioned it, and I don't want to give it away too much, but I mean, it was the the midpoint of the film. The, that okay, that, yeah, that's what I thought. You're, okay, so yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, wait, so what scene are you talking about then? I'm talking about before that when there Dick Cheney's daughter oh, has the confession oh. with yes, yes, and, and oh, we, okay, I see. Okay, okay, that right, makes right. sense. Like I get what you're going for now. Yeah, that that just to me felt like a portrait of what happened, and not really what happened i guess it was one of the few moments where i i wasn't quite with where the film was going but for the most part i i did follow this film all the way through and i do have some issues with it but uh with with, in regards to how it sort of balances the amy adams character and what it might be subtly implying about dick shaney's motivations i i think ultimately this is a film that is trying to reveal Dick Cheney to the world of like who he sort of is. And it offers a lot of different explanations. And one of them, one of the implied explanations is that he's sort of pushed into this initially by his wife. But I do think the film is also implying that it's him. It's who he is as a person. It just happens that his wife sort of feeds into this sort of political Machiavellian dynamic that ultimately comes across or ultimately has disastrous effects. I appreciate a lot of things in this movie. I like narrative documentaries that, like you said, take crazy chances and do different things without just ruining your life or ruining your cinematic life, I guess. And this is a little bit superior to something like American animals, which is trying to do sort of the same thing. Hmm, I, I Ultimately, I think American animals has a better a more cohesive third act in the way that it, it all comes together. But I thought this film was more enjoyable in how it gets there, I guess. Mm -hmm. So to me, it feels like American animals is like half of the great film that this could have been. And this is the other half almost. That's Mm -hmm. kind of where I'm at at the moment. You totally disagree. Yeah, no, I definitely preferred American animals. I think over this film overall, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, but no, I I think it might confuse you. Well, I was talking about mid credit scene earlier. I was talking about the one with the test audience, uh, oh, not the credits. Oh, 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 Okay, so we so, we had a completely a huge disconnect. Now, okay, uh, we don't want to talk about this further because we don't want to spoil it for anybody who's going to watch. But we'll we'll have this we'll have this conversation off air for sure. Okay, yeah, I was going to say I, I apologize. I think I might confuse you one because I forgot there was an actual literal mid credit scene in the film. So apologies. well. All of that said, I think that this film will confuse people anyway. So it sort of fits that in this review, people would get confused. But all right, that's Vice. I give it a B. You go to B minus. I I feel like this could have gone much worse. (laughs) I I, I was expecting us to be much more divided on this one. But it sounds like we're kind of on the same page for the most part. Uh, We're more together than America right now, I guess. (laughs) 